So we are here with Chuck and Linda Weffner who were gracious enough to allow us to do an interview. Uh, we have questions here from some students from Bayonne High School. First question comes from Angel Minna from period four. Angel asks, what inspired you to become a boxer? Well, first of all, hello Angel, hi everybody. Uh, I've done a couple of these before and I've always, always done very well and uh, the kids from high school are pretty sharp kids. They ask good questions, so quite sure it'll be a nice interview. Uh, my inspiration, I'll be honest with you, I was a basketball player in Bayonne, softball player. I've lived in Bayonne almost my whole life, uh, over 80 years. I'll be 83 in February. And um, I, uh, I started boxing because um, I had boxed a little bit in the Marine Corps uh, from 17 to 20 years old. And uh, I liked it because it was a singular sport. You didn't have to depend on anybody else. Uh, you have to depend on four other guys or eight other guys like baseball or softball and uh, and uh, other sports. So I uh, I had an opportunity in 1965 to uh, try out for the uh, uh, PAL boxing team. The PAL had a team um, and uh, no heavyweight uh, from uh, from the state of New Jersey had ever won the heavyweight championship. And uh, there was a lightweight champion named uh, uh, Red Red Boyle and um, uh, a welterweight champion named Johnny uh, Johnny DeGiulio, who many of you mm -hmm. must have known years ago, a good friend of mine too. And anyway, I went in. I, I trained and uh, for about five weeks, and uh, I had boxed, like I said before, a little bit in the Marine Corps, and. Um, they put me in. They didn't want to, one of the coaches said, Chuck's not ready. This is the New York and East Coast Nationals. It was in Madison Square Garden. It wasn't the Jersey Golden Club Championship. This was like the Nationals. And um, I went into the heavyweight division. And uh, I won five straight fights. And I won the heavyweight championship. And uh, at that time, there weren't many good white fighters around. Most of them were black and Hispanic. And I turned pro in 1966, and that started me on my career. Is that good, Angel? Pretty name. Second question comes from Andrew. How did you feel when you received the news that you were going to fight Muhammad Ali? Well, I was pretty excited, Andy. You know, it's, uh, it's a great honor to fight uh, as a professional anywhere. I fought... Uh, Matter of fact, I fought six times in Madison Square Garden, more than any other heavyweight or any other fighter. The only fight, uh, fighter to that time who had fought as many as me was um, uh, Emil Griffith, who was a, a welterweight and middleweight champion. And uh, I was banging around in the, uh, in the different gyms and everything, but uh, in 1973, I, uh, I joined the top 10 in the world with a couple of big wins. Uh, Biggest one probably against Ernie Terrell, who was a former WBO heavyweight champion in the world. I beat him in, uh, in Atlantic City, Boardwalk Hall. And um, it jumped me into the top 10 in the world. They ranked me eighth. And uh, because I was white, that was a big reason. Um, Ali wanted to fight me. He had just come off a knockout win to win back the heavyweight championship against George Foreman. And I was his next opponent. and. Uh, I felt pretty great about it. I was excited, and I had never trained full-time for a fight before in my life. Uh, I was a part-time fighter. I worked as a liquor salesman during the day, and I used to train at night. And Don King, who was the promoter, sent me away to camp for seven weeks. Uh, I got myself in great shape, and uh, I was ready for, the night, uh, for that night, and uh, I was ready to fight for the championship. From Jack, he asks, what was your reaction when you knocked down Ali? I was excited. I was really excited. You know, I, he threw a jab, and I slipped under it and threw a right hand and caught him right under the ribs. He was off balance. He was pulling away. That's what he, that was his technique. He'd pull away from punches, and that leaves you sometimes a little off balance. Uh, it wasn't a great punch, but it was a good punch, and I, I caught him right and dropped him, and... Uh, 
As a matter of fact, I went back to the corner. I said to my manager, Al, start the car. We're going to the bank with millionaires. And my manager said to me, Chuck, you better turn around. Ali's getting up and he looks pissed off. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> From Jordan, um, did you meet Sylvester Stallone or any of the producers to tell your story? Well, the way I heard about the, the movie being made, um, I got a call from one of Stallone's uh, executive directors. And he said to me, Chuck, uh, we saw the fight the other night, Stallone saw it, and he, was, he went crazy. He was excited, and he wrote a, m a movie about you, and it's coming out uh, in about a month. Uh, it's going to be debuting in New York. And um, why don't you come over as our guest and, uh, and watch the movie? and see what you think of it. And I did, and uh, I loved the movie. The movie was packed with a lot of celebrities because it was a, the premiere of, a, of the movie Rocky, and uh, the rest is history. That was over 40 years ago, and I was thrilled. Um, Peter Kaltz asked, who was your favorite person to box? What was your favorite boxing match? Up until that time, what was my favorite boxing match? I'd have to say um, Rocky Marciano and Jersey Joe Walker. Marciano was getting beat until the 13th round, and uh, uh, The Rock hit him with a right hand and, uh, and knocked him out to win the championship. I became a pretty good friend of Rocky Marciano's after that, and uh, he had come to a couple of my fights, and uh, that was a great thrill. That was, that was probably the best fight I saw going into a my shot but against Ali. Mia asked, since you attended Bayonne High School, how did you like it? What was it like when you went there? I, I wasn't much of a school person. I didn't, I didn't like school because I wasn't uh, real smart, because I didn't study. I should have studied more, but I was a jock. I was playing high school basketball as a senior and uh, under Bernie O'Keen. And uh, I was more interested in sports than I was in studying. And uh, so I got through high school, but uh, I finished high school in uh, 1959. And uh, I didn't graduate, but I went, I joined the Marine Corps a few months later and I got my GCD and, uh, hey? GED. GED, I got my GED in Sorry. the Marine Corps. And I picked up that last uh, couple of credits and uh, I earned my diploma. From Ashley, why did you decide to stay in your hometown, Bayonne? Oh, I love this city. Yeah, I've always loved it. You know, it's a, it's a small town, but it's, uh, it's right near the big time. You know, it's right near New York and Newark and everything else. And uh, growing up here, um, I made a lot of great friends. And uh, why would I leave? You know, we bought my wife and I, Linda. By the way, this is my wife, Linda, here. And uh, we bought a, a condo down in uh, Hollywood, Florida. And so we try to get back and forth, although we don't really get to Florida as much as we'd like to, you know, on vacations and all, because we work for a liquor company, Allied Liquors, out in Elizabeth, and it's the biggest company in the state. And uh, we just didn't have the time to get down there as much as we'd like to. And uh, then finally, after trying for a couple of years, I said, you know what? We're going to keep the condo down there, but I'm going to stay in Bayonne for the rest of my life. And who knows that? I mean, I'm 83 years old now, so there's not a lot of good years left. But I'm lucky. I got a beautiful wife, and I got a lot of good friends here. And uh, so I'll finish up here in Bayonne. Thank you. And then also, this is from Jack. He drew this for you, and he was wondering if you could sign it. Sure. <laughs> of course. The Jack? Yep. His name is Jack. Huh? That's nice. My did pal see, Jack. Did you see that painting? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, they saw the painting. It's beautiful. A friend of mine just. Uh, just did it, and um, he's uh, he's terrific, terrific painter. I, I'm very lucky. I got great 
great photographers that do a great job for me all the time. I got artists that do terrific uh, caricatures of me, and uh, it's, uh, you know, this is, I live in a beautiful condo, which I've been the president of since they built it 30 years. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was the first one in the building. I had a, an apartment down the hall. I lived here for three months before anybody else uh, even moved in. You know, I was the first one in, and uh, Guy Alessi and the, uh, my friend Joe built it. And uh, I, I love it here. I love the apartment. Since then, we moved to a bigger apartment because I got remarried to my wife and um, my third wife, by the way, Linda. She, uh -huh. she hit the number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I and, and I love it here. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful apartment. And uh, like I say, I wouldn't move from Bayonne. I'm going to finish up here, however long that takes. And uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to the next 10 years and hope I live it. Thank you so much for indulging us. Oh, you didn't indulge me. I've been doing, I've done probably in this apartment alone, uh, close to 30 interviews with CBS, NBC. Um, Japan, they, Italy. Yeah, Japan, Italy. Yeah, people from all over Germany, the world came Russia. here. And wow. uh, as a matter of fact, when Japan came, they came here with 10 people, cameras, umbrellas, everything, you know, and oh, uh, uh, because I was going over to Japan to fight. Um, I fought uh, Antonio Inoki, who was the um, uh, karate and jiu-jitsu champion of the world. I fought him in Tokyo, and uh, they came in when I fought in England. The people from England came over, and uh, South Africa. Everybody I fought, I had a lot of, a lot of nice people in here, and a lot of the apartment changed some. We've upgraded my wife. That's, that's her. She's great with furniture and stuff like that. And it's a two bedroom, two bath, and 1,600 feet almost. And it's plenty, plenty of room for us. And uh, like I said, it's, it's Bayonne. I love Bayonne and uh, we're lucky. We have great people here. We've had great uh, politicians to run our city for us from St. Uh, Francis Fitzpatrick, uh, who was a friend of mine um, some 50 years ago. Right now we have Jimmy Davis who's our mayor, and he's doing a great job. He's on his second term now. And, um, you know, I couldn't ask for more. You know, this is it, so.